Laos threaten peaceful Thailand, and Navy ships bring in Marines. The crisis? Another brief flare-up in the Cold War between East and West. By sea and by air come the men of the Marine Corps, and the supplies to maintain them in the field. Additional forces are flown in by the Air Force. Another demonstration of our military flexibility as Navy, Marine Corps, Air Force, and Army cooperate to tell the communists, hands off. In nearby Vietnam, another kind of assistance, demonstrating to the Vietnamese military the training techniques developed by Navy schools. The all-service program is called MAG, Military Assistance and Advisory Group. Its purpose, to help the Vietnamese help themselves in their effort to avoid engulfment by the red tide of communism. Knowledge is the program's most important weapon, for each student will soon be an instructor, training many other Vietnam troops in the techniques of military survival. Mag's theme is simple, self-help is the best help. Off the west coast of the Philippines, signal flags spell out a message to CETO task force units. Participating nations are Australia, New Zealand, the Philippines, Pakistan, Thailand, the United Kingdom, and the United States. Emphasis for this exercise is placed on protection of a convoy from attack by submarines or aircraft. Sea Devil, sponsored by Australia and given administrative support by the Philippines, is the 21st exercise staged by member nations of the Southeast Asia Treaty Organization. Evaluation, practical experience, efficient coordination for CETO forces in 62. The West German port of Kiel on the Baltic Sea, the USS Wasp, believed to be the first carrier ever to visit the locale, leads 11 units of Task Group Bravo on a goodwill mission to German port cities. It's welcome aboard for a tour of the Wasp. And what a crowd turns out to visit. Here's an eager visitor who's determined to wait for his chance to board the ship. To look around, meet the crew, and ride the elevator, while other visitors provide Navy personnel opportunity to promote the people-to-people -people program. Meanwhile, German guests inspect a submarine, eight destroyers, a fleet oiler, and turn white hats into celebrities. Americans and Germans getting to know each other better. John F. Kennedy joins Navy festivities at Groton to christen the largest submarine ever built. The Lafayette, prototype of a new class of FBM submarines, is scheduled for active duty by the end of the year. For Wave Barbara Metris, chief storekeeper, a letter of commendation as she becomes the first enlisted woman in the armed services to complete 20 years of active duty. Ceremonies at San Diego's North Island Naval Air Station mark her transfer to the Fleet Reserve. Her husband, retired Chief Warrant Officer George Metris, proudly witnesses the ceremony. They'll live in Massachusetts, where Mrs. Metris enlisted 20 years ago. In 
In Memorial Day ceremonies at Pearl Harbor, a new shrine built on the sunken hull of the USS Arizona is dedicated to the memory of the men who died aboard the ship on December 7, 1941. The Arizona has never been decommissioned. More than 1,100 men are still aboard. The Honorable Olin E. Teague, U.S. Congressional Representative from the state of Texas, delivered the dedication address. The ceremony concluded with a 21-gun salute and tap. games at Annapolis during the annual athletic weekend between West Point and the Naval Academy. Early in June, the officer schools compete in five events, track, tennis, lacrosse, golf, and baseball, in the traditional spirit of keen inter-service competition. Scores are close, Army taking track events by a score of 75 to 74, Navy the baseball game 4 to 2. Navy wins its fifth consecutive overall triumph, three events to Army's two. At Norfolk's amphibious training base, a different kind of exercise for 20,000 Army men. A Navy Marine Corps team is teaching them the latest techniques in amphibious warfare. The soldiers from armored cavalry and infantry units try the sprint and the high jump. The course in weightlifting is not so bad. Machinery supplies the muscles, and no one's trying to set a new world's record. Now it's fall in for the obstacle course, the final exam for the two-week training session. The training is rugged but each of the 20,000 soldiers who enter to learn will depart better prepared to serve. Television joins the Navy. Its electronic eye aids pilots and landing signal officers in bringing carrier planes home safely. The closed circuit system, comprised of standard broadcast equipment, is called PLAT. Pilot Landing Aid Television. Three conversation as well as picture is recorded on a single tape, which can be used immediately for playbacks at debriefing sessions. During operations, TV monitors inform the ship's captain and aid the LSO in talking down aircraft to accident-free landing. Pilot Landing Aid Television the newest advance in safety for the Navy's carrier aviators. Secretary of the Navy Fred Korth arrives for a demonstration ride in the Highlander, an experimental hydrofoil landing craft. The Highlander's hull is similar to that of a World War II LCVP, and she cruises in about the same fashion. Until she lowers her foils, that is. Now her twin 275 horsepower engines propel Highlander up on her water skis, and she tops 35 knots, three times the speed of a conventional craft. Whatever her future, today she's riding high, a real Highlander fling. Air Roll, the Navy's new vehicle designed to travel over mud, sand, snow, or swampland. In spite of the vehicle's cumbersome appearance, air roll can do 30 miles an hour over a paved highway without damage to the surface. Power is supplied by a standard 80 horsepower automobile engine. Her wheels consist of free rolling low pressure tires mounted in an endless track. Whether in the muddy swamps of Mississippi or 40-inch deep Colorado snow, Air Roll demonstrates its rugged perseverance, packing its own roadway as it forges ahead. A 
Aboard the USS Galveston, operational tests of the Navy's surface-to-air missile, Talos. Talos is a high-altitude killer designed to destroy enemy aircraft at ranges greater than 50 miles. These tests from the guided missile cruiser take us behind the scenes as the launching sequence unfolds. Now in slow motion dramatic photography, as the motion picture camera rides aboard a Talos missile, photography adds its contribution to fleet readiness, capturing a visual record of first and second stage separation as Talos zooms toward the edge of space. Thank <laughs> you. 